Welcome, brethren, Imperator Rajarith Avoid. You know, I'm coming back from my uh, destructive hiatus against enemies who keep getting in my way and very much enjoying my Yule and Winter Solstice, you know, and Happy New Year to you guys as well, you know. So you saw the uh, <laughs> these uh, idiots reported my uh, Haitian Buran jar for a uh, hate speech and death threats, which was beyond fucking hilarious. You know, that's okay. The people who needed to look at it have looked at it got trapped because it was it was completely laced you know and have been sacrificed for my benefit you know for getting in the fucking way and bringing drama you know so i can once more you know kick out informational uh videos you know if you've made it this far after all the bullshit we've had to silence then congratulations my purpose for making many wait was for the sole purpose so you could absorb the knowledge without misconception and bias from the countless dross-minded individuals who tried and failed to demonize our current and its knowledge. You know, we are simply trying to bring and teach, you know, in peace. So I still have a bit of fallacy to get rid of, uh, since I've come back, you know, and it'll be about previous videos they've made, you know, even and recently. Um, quite a select few jackasses tried to be subversive, so I have more references of stupidity, you know. But I'm, I get to go more in depth about the towers, you know, naturally in a pure Rajarith fashion. This video will be pretty visceral, you know, more so than usual, and will be quite informative, you know, so it's entities, um, I'm going to explain what you can affect, uh, expect here, um, whereas part two will contain chants along with other information with a deeper ex explanation of uh, certain types of void sorcery, you know. I naturally want to thank all those who have watched us disprove the bullshit, you know, as well as dedicating themselves and vouching for me as I am practices, you know. All our enemies have done is given us complete momentum of them and dug their own grave and led us into a direction of fighting back that the spirits have beyond blessed us for, you know, so, um, so let's start off by talking about, um, what you can expect from, from the void and Salasayir itself, you know, um, its lords and ladies who dwell within it. I'm going to list off the void spirits as well you know, and read their descriptions. Um, this is mainly for those who have talked to me in countries where I know you can't necessarily get the books lest you uh, get charged, you know, killed or, you know, um, um, imprisoned, you know. So some of you have made it known to me that you can only call them by name alone due to your circumstances, which is, you know, perfectly fine. I have my books and notes here just for you, so you're going to see me, you know, um, reading from it. I got it on a book stand so you could get to know them um, and call them by name and begin your practices, you know, having them dwell within your life. So, firstly, let's begin with the Lady Astraya. Also, before I get to her description, as well, people have asked me about the uh, pronunciation. I say it as such because it's what Akrayoth, her father, you know, calls her. You know, Lady Astraya, Oracle and Lady of the Void, you know. She specializes in teaching divination, um, enlightenment, you know. The darker aspects of enlightenment, astral travel, you know, via uh, mastery of the void body, 
and complete omniscience and that's only gleaming the surface you know there's also been a fallacy going around thanks to idiots like uh, Christian uh, Astrael is not a starte anyone who is in a wannabe megachurch pastor magician who isn't completely spiritually blind know this knows this isn't the case at all you know but she she's gonna be the one who uh, helps you master astral travel and not pretend like I see uh, most Westerners do today now then there's uh, Aethel artificial seals divination sigil magic you know candle and mirror magic you know he appears as uh, strong confident immensely intelligent you know Aethel appears to be uh, with the majesty of a king in white you know his hair skin and eyes are all pale and white you know his his teeth and his nails are you know completely blackened he wears a crown adorned with you know these psionic stones found throughout different dimensions you know Aethel will be the proper advisor his dominion is that of signs symbols seals you know which reveals much of the unknown you know when you properly read him you know he teaches the disciple um, the methods of mastering divination you know through astrology tarot uh, spirit boards pendulums you know runes bones mirrors and so forth you know he teaches absolute proficiency with these tools you know that you'll be able to you know, delve into the ways of old and always remember them rather than adhere to people who have been polarized. Um, then there's Ilimbaros, demon of a thousand eyes. You know, he specializes in palmistry, knowledge, um, scholarship, you know, study, discovering everything that's hidden. You know, he started off, this is interesting because he started off as Astrael's uh, consort and personal servitor. You know, he was a diviner of the Zhuzhia uh, family. He ascended through his magical pursuits with Astrael and his patron. You know, he found himself before Cinnabog, and he's the one that grants you the Black Throne. So he was given his place within the Black Court. You know, this agreement further transfigured him into what he is, you know. Uh, a true risen mortal, a seer, you know. So let's get to his uh, appearance. You know, Ilan Battles appears as a man with sunken eyes, you know, um, eyes that look from his palm, you know, and a halo of eyes around him. You will see them kind of, when you summon him, peer in and out of reality. Now, he teaches you to use these, and this is one of the methods of. Quite a few of you have been curious about how I appear at a certain time when interacting with you. That's why, because I'm able to watch you through that. So, and then there's, you know, uh, Jales, you know, Hecatu. She specializes um, in void pain, you know, bondage, physical torment, you know, psionic warfare. You know, she appears as a uh, with skin of smoky ebon, her malevolence is just, as it states, even darker than her flesh. You know, it's slick back, it has blood. You know, she's an ally of Alodison. You know, she too wears, you know, these tight garments made out of the flesh of, of human individuals, you know. Um, she has those crimson eyes which burn with a hatred for all things, you know. She destroys any and all who don't possess a resolve to endure and master themselves to overcome, you know. As I say, she takes great uh, joy in teaching others to destroy the mind, body, and soul through uh, cerebral and psionic carnage, you know. She's, uh, she's really patient, you know, mainly with disciples, but if you are getting to a state of lethargy, it's it's going to cost you, you know. So, you know, she's she's uh, my primary patron and path of apotheosis, which I'll explain that in another video, just because of how in depth it is. 
she specializes in providing the path of the vile oracle. So we'll we'll get to that. You know, then there's Mizra, uh, Lady of the Dark Gate. You know, she specializes in um, space, quantum science. You know, um, creating and crafting planar gates. You know, she appears to disciples as a slim girl with alabaster skin, hair of snow. You know, her eyes shine like black glass, like they're completely blacked over, you know, and her lips are almost blue as if she's dead, you know, so her ears are, you know, long pointed. She wears darkness like a robe as it states, you know, her voice is literally just always calming and rips those uh, weaknesses right out of you while she's speaking, you know. She's the one who's going to teach the disciple how to manipulate your own personal uh, time and spatial structure around you. You know, her favorite way to do this is direct invocation, like uh, as in um, possessing you, you know, while instructing you how to do this while um, using demonic puppetry to control your vessel. Now, there's, um, speaking of that, there's a lot of, you know, Lord of Sedensith. Now, that's his dominion, you know. He specializes in absolute psychic supremacy, you know, domination, mental enslavement, you know, and spiritual bondage, you know, breaking someone, you know. He appears as tall, slim, completely brooding, you know, he's got this, uh, he's shrouded in this long violet robe made of the flesh of light what we would consider to be extraterrestrial beings you know in this plane of chaos you know it's it's completely filled with darkness and you know just madness so he has this energy consistently you know crackling around his uh his vessel now he's got he appears to have these uh, tendrils appearing on the back of his skull. Um, his teeth, you know, are razor-like. You know, his eyes are pale. You know, he never blinks. And for those of, who are ready to speak with him, he mainly speaks through differently, you know, uh, completely through telepathy rather than uh, you being able to hear it through different forms of uh, summoning, you know. He speaks in a guttural tone you know he's willing to share his secrets of mental domination psychic enslavement you know physical uh, torture and spiritual probing you know this is one of the ones that allows me to see into my enemies heads to see what they're gonna do against me or have done then there's Shavimsha the guide um, she specializes in protecting yourself while you are astrally projecting, remote viewing, you know, she specializes in creating powerful psychic wards around yourself. Now, she's going to be the guardian you call while you're projecting into any dimension, especially if you go there physically. You know, she's a constant guide and protector. She herself will teach you and she's going to safeguard you know, your physical and astral bodies while you're traveling. Because people have this idea that, oh, nothing can harm you while you're doing this. Your body is your body. They can't sever the silver cord. Yes, they can. You know. So she appears um, with a robe that appears as if it's made of stars, which is interesting. When you summon her, your entire temple changes. You know, um, then there's Lady Mendera. This is one of the new spirits, you know, um, that I've been able to uncover here. You know, she uh, she appears as if she's got this sand-like flesh, you know. She specializes in possession, bringing ruin to the mind or poisoning or trapping certain entities. She's very well adept at illusions. You know, it's very important to note that she can not only poison your mind, but your energy. I've undergone a certain transfiguration rite that leads to a natural form of uh, 
energetic poison you know which is useful if you have a bunch of weak trash novices trying to drain you and everything you know uh, there's always a select few group of idiots who have been using it for for years thinking they can get past it or you know idiots fall for it every single day you know um, one of the demonic chants I posted for that is actually in the uh, Facebook group you know um, um, I saw a few who had you know their eyes open and I was able to see this mega church pastor try to curse me and saw it blow up in his fucking face on camera you know he ended up poisoning himself and his temple so she's the one who teaches how to lace and poison things astrally like I do with certain things when I put these out whenever my enemies will try and uh, curse me through these you know then there's Heindel you know this one appears as a blind old sorcerer you know he's primarily consorted to discern the circumstances of an issue or action to be taken you know on how something happens and what is going to occur if you take a certain path he'll show you the how and the why you know mastering this mastering all he had to offer showed me my enemy's plans you know what's going on with their each individual works against me you know then there's a Sidadinian you know this spirit focuses on um, discerning f uh, faces names aliases personal information you know all kinds of crazy shit passwords social security numbers he can help you get it <laughs> now you know he knows everything of those he looks upon even personal sigils you know this is the one who actually taught me how to locate each and every one of my enemies and why they can't hide for, uh, behind fake profiles you know in addition to uh, you know his knowledge of technology he has showed me that everything has an energy signature and it can be traced you know through even your uh, even fake profiles you know it's why I don't bother using a fake profile or name because any sorcerer who would be a threat to me would know how to use it anyway um, so definitely seek him if you're in public eye and you got a bunch of trolls and a bunch of dumb motherfuckers you just want to destroy um, then there's Lady Bayeshani she is a feminine spirit appearing with caramel skin platinum hair you know she shows one to see through all complications problems tricks deceit you know that may be seen before you know you fall for it you know she's herself has stopped me from being completely deceived by frauds and into uh, spiritual currents that would have led to my spiritual depth and destruction you know she blesses you when you've gone through her uh, path working she blesses you with this sight um, that you can see every single machination weaved against you so that's that's it is outstanding to be able to see that you know uh, then there is Lady Angruel one of my uh, one of my favorites when it comes to uh, fucking with people you know who get in the way you know she appears with alabaster skin jet black hair she teaches void nightmare sorcery and the creation of egregoric horrors which is one of my favorites you know because she can help you craft defenses within your own inner sanctum and psychic basin this is creating a nightmare egregore will be based on someone's own insecurities doubts everything that they are you know will manifest into this beast and start fucking destroying them you know then we have uh lukabi demoness of manipulation you know she appears very strange with black skin uh exo ribs akin to a dead spirit she's got these really long uh claws 
and their skull. You know, she specializes in trickery, deceit, phantasms, and causing the uh, restless spirits of the dead, you know, to mentally rape an, indiv an individual into submission. You know, one of my personal favorites to use, you know. But those are the, uh, the void spirits and quite a few of the new ones that we've been able to uncover. Now, I want to start this video off by naturally shattering the illusion of fallacy where people think about the void. Um, that its apotheosis only leads to um, possessing new bodies for, to stay here. You know, while this is indeed a skill you're expected to master, you know, I, this is by far not the only method. I saw this posted, you know, by someone who's a postulant, no less, you know, who is no longer with us, and that is, that is that the void, they think the void is about possessing bodies for immortality, and it's not like that, so, um, as I stated in previous videos, I have to, uh, unfortunately cater to, um, certain, uh, social engineering, sadly, by speaking of the end goal of the Tower of Void, because people try to time their successes, you know, they don't, they think, oh, if, if after three months I don't transfigure, I'm gonna leave or give up on my craft, you know. So let's talk about what you can expect, you know, before we begin, you know, and this is a grossly oversimplification of the Void's paths of transfiguration, you know, under uh, its astral dignitaries, you know. They are nearly, the paths are nearly infinite here, you know, it's essentially what you will be uh, striving to become is that immortal apparition, you know, as those of the Void are known as, as we are about, through even through myth, you know, about the Void uh, selling your soul to the void or something like that when actuality a portion of you becomes void and you're melding with it you're becoming it you know we dedicate ourselves and allow ourselves as I stated before to be subsumed in it so that in time we keep our most powerful um, human traits to remain anchored into this plane of existence you know, the individuals of the void, you know, we are the true host of psychic energy, that ghost, that phantom, you know, the medium, the scion, the seer, you know, and eventually the oracle, you know, it is, we by our very presence, the veil parts as the seals around us are broken and the minds around us, those who we talk to awaken through to the truth of this reality, you know, but remember, this is a um, oversimplified version. I'll be going, I'll be going over more, you know, as I get to uh, uh, speak about. It. I think I'll wait on certain things until part two. So let's start off with uh, the Tower of the Voids synchronicity. Um, so. Let's get to uh, the synchronicity of it will be, you know, it's metals will be, you know, silver, gold, it's colors, blue, white, gray, you know, certain crystal components will be amethyst, you know, crystal, uh, rose quartz, black onyx, lapis lazuli, uh, crystals that possess certain psychic ability, you know, and as I stated in the uh, sacred ornamentation video, Certain cardinal colors take upon energy very well, you know, as I stated, it was similar to uh, how the Muslims uh, made certain colors, you know, uh, haram, such as red, because they know it evokes a certain energy, especially that of the shaitan, you know, um, just as silver takes in void energy very well, you know, and causes it to instantly tarnish, you know, such as, um, 
like I stated, the uh, the silver beads I still have in my hair now, you know, completely um, um, black, you know, and like I like I stated before, it's I use those to assist in my meditation as um, talismans for omniscience projection, you know, and I'm still, you know, saving that for part two just because of how long and advanced the actual uh, rights are for that as well as the uh, explanation you know but um, to start off I would generally recommend uh, blue hues for certain sacred color resonance and silver or gold so you can have the proper conductivity and you can get a feel for the void as you start manipulating it. You know, due to the observance of sacred color resonance, you'll notice that the void eats through certain types of uh, cloth colors as well. You know, they'll be completely, they'll start disintegrating, you know, and it's affected by the void's energy. You know, um, some clothes, uh, like what I'm wearing, and the cloth gate behind me take the energy well so they won't be destroyed because it's completely in sync you know it won't wither away you know but certain fabrics and certain color resonance they they can't take void energy very well you know it's similar to how a necromancer's clothing can be eaten away unless they wear uh, black due to its con uh, conductivity you know, even though death doesn't obey a uh, natural law, it'll still tatter slightly, but then it'll eventually just stop, you know, but please observe these, you know, as best you can. I know so many people have been programmed by EA Coetting into thinking, it's all dogma and have no power, how much of this is, you know, fake tradition, you know, all of that shit. But it's completely, it's sheer fallacy. I think I referenced Samson from the Bible, you know, the JCI Bible in a previous video, you know, uh, or um, on a Facebook post, but about his hair being a form of confidence, as if you didn't know your vessel can and contain certain aspects and can be forms of sacred ornamentation you know if honed properly this is why you see certain individuals take their uh, dreads very seriously and everything like that and say it's a spiritual journey because it is you know through this i was able to change my vessel purely through force of will you know observing this can beyond bolster your ascent you know if you if you keep to your practices well enough you know now i want to start talking about what the void actually is as well the void is a place where every thought you could possibly contrive becomes reality it is where the first sentient beings became consciously aware you know when we first became um aware of enlightenment you know during our evolution, we ingested, you know, things such as DMT and shit like that, you know. It is the host of the astral planes and its dignitaries. I've stated in previous videos, it's not the same as the abyss, nor is it uh, from uh, Final Fantasy. I've seen uh, select few idiots say or state that it's from uh, D and D or uh, Final Fantasy or some dumb shit like that. Worst yet, I've seen EA and uh, Asborn Torval try and speak on void and darkness. You know, each a televangelist drama gimmick sorcerer, one of which attacked us for it with his new gimmick. Oh, I'm here to separate magic from fantasy. <laughs> you know, to help real people in real reality. You know. The thing is about that, you can't work with someone who becomes a living God and then say, oh, God is a fantasy. You know, in order to tap into sorcery, you must disconnect because you are placing yourself into a reality of limitless possibilities. You know, 
the magic of the void breaks down reality. It breaks down impossibilities. You know, um, I wanted to mention that martial, art, martial artists, uh, Taoist, certain monks tap into it all the time. You know, even have some of their uh, techniques around this, such as uh, uh, the martial artists calling it the, the way of the void, you know. The void is a psychic multiversal subcurrent, you know, that exists within Maya Jarai. You know, this is why astral dignitaries such as uh, Astrael move to a higher throne. They're getting closer to the void's origins, you know, where sentient thoughts have formed, you know, um, from all creatures, not of this world, even extraterrestrials. You know, um, even creatures like the uh, Anunnaki or gods from the old mythos, you know. So it's very seemingly alien, you know. You'll see a lot of tribal uh, creatures within it as well, you know, that draws from its, uh, its void psionics. You know, it's an extremely form of old sorcery that even my ancestral spirits recognize and know well what it is as it's used greatly in tribes all over you know such as uh you use it you use the void to enter into trance states you know what westerners thought was rain dancing you know it was a form of storm calling you know ritual to conjure the void and cause planar atmospheric friction to bring water and life to barren land, you know, even Baron Song Z, you know, knows knows very well how to wield this as well as Met Kaufu. They it's they're the ones who use it as well because to cast open gates, gateways, you're going to need to master the void, you know. So my people are not a stranger to uh, the void, you know, it's a current that we understand very well, you know, as we were learning to speak with the voice of the void, you know. I also wanted to touch on a fallacy that most Western sorcerers keep thinking that the void is related to the infernal abyss akin to the lake of fire or hells, you know, sadly, most of the time, it's some weak magician trying to talk about something they think and not a lot of people are talking about and make it seem as dark as possible. So they're going to syncreticize certain things that isn't actually there, you know. And this weakens uh, sorcery, the knowledge of sorcery, you know. But they have something similar, you know, the, uh, the abyssal void, which is where darker astral dignitaries you know, reside with their legionnaires, but it's separate from what these people keep trying to talk about, you know, it's where you draw on the more destructive forms of energy to either conquer or enslave your enemies, you know, many, I would go so far as to say many mortals on the planet have uh, a small spark of void within them if they haven't given themselves to the JCI or, you know, televangelists who take your energy, you know, and you haven't had your mind subjugated, you know, many people are capable of using the void but will, you know, reject it or get it wrong. Now, like all sorcery, there are certain drawbacks if you are negligent of the void or caring for yourself. Some can even, you know, be a uh, transfiguration phase, you know, but it also can cause mental disturbances, you know, emotional issues or breakdowns or uh, uh, psychological lapses and even suicide attempts if you aren't careful. Also, you will attract certain uh, extraterrestrial entities, you know, as well, due to what you are and what you're becoming, that want to feed on what you are or extract you, you know, or in the case of the Celestials, just outright destroy you because they don't want the truth being known. Now, if you, some of its manifestation anomalies will include, you know, uh, 
blow out it'll blow out light bulbs due to the energy gathering around the uh, tungsten filament within light bulbs so it naturally destroys that metal you know it'll be an influx influx of energy when it's manifesting you'll feel this strange breeze through your body you know as you start to disconnect from this reality because you're starting to reside somewhere else now you know you may not see your reflection as well you may see what you really are you know certain things i found to be a real pain in the ass is the uh electrical disturbances you know you want to move things with uh lithium batteries away from your altar and uh where you sleep in or where you meditate in you know uh psychokinetic abilities develop as well this is uh very common i teach those who are at that level who have you know ditched the mundane you know cert certain people commonly make this mistake that poltergeist acti uh poltergeist activity when something's being drawn for drawn towards them they're like did i piss something off but you have to remember, you're becoming one with the void. You're becoming a living tear in the veil. Objects will be pulled or pushed away as your connection with the void develops and deepens. You're going to see every glitch in reality, you know, due to where you are and what you're becoming, you know, and even cause some your own, you know, especially if you're, you're gazing into the void with your true spirit sight. So, for the, uh, for the positive changes, you know, there are, there are quite, uh, there are, there are so many, such as the, uh, I would say that you possess a higher IQ than average, you know, your problem-solving skills, understanding of deeper mysteries, seeing through all lies, you know, true spirit divination, not what most modern sorcerers do sit there talk to themselves and you know even EA has promoted this kind of behavior of fake it till you make it you know it has a peculiar effect to the intelligence when speaking to other entities you know that most will be able to recognize when they talk to you um, you know they won't talk to you as if you are human I've noticed they'll talk talk to you as if you just stepped out of the void you know, rather than someone trying to conjure, uh, conjure them, you know, it all co it also affects your uh, eyesight. You have this enhanced perception. You see things uh, before they happen. You react quicker. You know, it also comes with prophetic dreams, visions of you know people who have been against you, who's working against you. You know, then there's that complete access to your previous incarnations as well as your ancestral sorcery you know you also regain the uh, mastery of fragmented ancestral memories you know similar to what we do when we read someone's spirit you know and you're going to be able to do that as well you're gonna be able to see through people quite easily you're going to see what motivates them what's their ambition you know if they're lying to you, you know, if they're trying to flatter you with, with, uh, fake bullshit, you know, you'll see with a clear <laughs> vision through a televangelist, you know, social engineering like I do with every, uh, mega church pastor magician and, you know, going out of his way to fucking say, I've absorbed all my spiritual debt. I'm, you know, I'm absorbing all curses and, you know, try and spin lies about him getting fucked up, you know, to discourage people from <laughs> striking at him, you know, you, you see through all of the fucking drug-induced rants all over the place, you know, you know, don't get me wrong, we, we have curse reversal in the Cabal, it's been out there for a long time, but, but, <laughs> tap into the void and you're going to see through all the subversive lies you know that are so intellectually insulting to you that you obtain 
a ravenous desire for truth and knowledge rather than, you know, frauds who call themselves gods, you know, you will be actually traversing the path to become one and possess skills, knowledge, and see things that, quite frankly, they'll never possess, you know. You should also be diligent in your uh, practices and meditation. You'll notice that uh, there will be quite the change in your health, the way the void will heal and keep all sicknesses at bay. You know, as it possesses regenerative properties of the, of the body, um, you'll notice an individual who has been in balance with the void and com in complete resonance we appear younger, you know, and in perfect health, you know, completely rejuvenated all the time. You know, we could meditate for five minutes and it'll feel like we've had our eight hours of sleep. You know, it also has, the, has these uh, natural defenses, you know, as well to even the most powerful curses from adversarial entities and dissolve them. You know, at this point it becomes very difficult for people to enter your psychic basin or your mind without getting scathed or sacrificed by your own God self, you know, as it's, as you're uh, pulling your God self closer through the void. You know, the, the thing is about this as well, you're going to be more vulnerable to possession, which is a plus for some people, such as myself, <laughs> you know. And as I said before, we are the void are true mediums, you know, uh, true psychics, you know, trans states for us are second nature, you know, and not, you know, mega church pastor magicians flailing all about idiotically on camera. You know, our trance states are very well controlled and focused in the void so that we're still conscious while this is occurring. So, another trait is when you rest, you're going to be phasing in and out of uh, reality. Certain people may even forget your face because as of that moment, you weren't existing in the realm before they spoke to you. So you're going to start doing these strange uh, shifting, shifting between the ether, but becoming aware of events in every timeline, you know, every quantum tectonic shift is known to you, you know. Uh, another drawback is being around people, you know, it can affect your energy, you know, if you don't leave yourself protected and People are going to look at you strange because they're going to see this luminescent glow around your flesh and it's kind of going to give you away, you know. Now, now on to my personal favorite, you know, it's psychic surgery, using uh, abyssal void energy to destroy and cure certain uh, sicknesses, you know. And there's more advanced forms, you know. Uh, rituals to be used, but it comes with this natural form of healing basic problems, you know, when you uh, truly work for it, such as paralysis, you know, uh, sickness, holding back disorders, uh, uh, blood disorders like my own, you know, help your immune system become strong, you know. This was an absolute game changer for me because with my SC being my uh, disorder, my blood didn't fight off infections. You know, it now does to an extreme degree. I just don't get sick. You know, it's something that the doctors have noticed as it's an anomaly, you know, with certain machines as well. It's, uh, they'll, they're gonna notice these anomalies, if they ever do x-rays or CAT scan machines, you know, um, especially ones that uh, manipulate radiation will be affected. So, those, we don't suffer mental fatigue, you know, you notice after all the bullshit I, I will deal with from jackasses all over the place, they can never mentally fatigue me, you know, I never will get tired of fucking them up or doing some shit, you know, you're going to begin to see 
behavior and mental reactions you didn't notice um, with your vessel. You know, it's this uh, physical adaptation to nearly anything you face. So there are very observable physiological changes that occur within the mind and body. You know, you can expect from the void whilst you are letting yourself be subsumed in it. And you have to remember the, the mighty oak doesn't grow overnight, you know, and, you know, since this pertains to my, uh, my rise through void and I'm tired of fucking hearing it. I know I mentioned it in another video, but there's fucking mega church pastors trying to be subversive about taking credit, um, for my healing. EA Coetting trying to claim he saved my life from a chronic pain disorder. You know, you know, I save your life, I take your life, and blah, 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 blah. Try to bind my tongue, other idiocy. You know, when the te techniques you hear me describing is and what's been used to one of the factors to assist in my healing, you know, he wants to be a part of this equation, you know, to to have this, what I can only describe as this slave master, like, I made you mentality, you know, when he isn't a part of the um, uh, factor. He's attempting to use a weak hominid, ad hominem attack to, uh, in retaliation for due to the retaliation of the drama, you know, he started. Now he's just humiliating himself relentlessly, you know, when bullshit was dissected in fallacy and insight and the timing of my ascent and the work he did for me when, before I was a, teen, a tween, before my family practices and training, you know, my initiation, it doesn't coincide with him at all. So for him to say he saved my life from a disorder you know that I will and still have but have absolutely control over you know he wouldn't attempt this had he not been insecure about his own sorcery you know this goes back to what I was stating about spiritual alchemy because the ego and theatrics have consumed him you know there was a time actually when there was something to respect you know, he's failed his patron and Azazel's trials and tribulations and slipped back into his own personal hell of habitual enslavement to substances, psychodrama, theatrics, you know, claiming the work of others, you know, and weak televangelism, posturing for social relevancy and veneration from people, you know starting drama subversively in an attempt to profit you know like I said on my post which he then tries to act a victim of but trying to take credit for my initiation and healing and all occultists creating websites other authors go to him to pretty much use him and reach a larger audience that's pretty much it you know most of them aren't blind, you know, they aren't claiming the work of others or trying to do the shit he did. This is the very thing that got his god self, Archelus Baron, sacrificed by another member of our community in Haiti, you know, because you were doing the same thing to him, you know. If anyone didn't know, this is, this is he's doing all this subversive shit because Somnus isn't going to censor me, you know, he expected to be, me to be censored, but he didn't want to censor his own people with the drama cell shit, oh, I don't believe in censorship, you know, drama cell ceaselessly, so trying to start drama with us, you know, you'll, you'll get a form of response, you know, posturing with all that bullshit your curse should fuel me you know it's it's the same shit make no mistake he's been out of resonance with his patron for a very long time you know i see how all these communities have done to you you know 
and you're at a state to where you'll never get it back you know your your ambition has been killed you know back in the day the man that i saw in those old video courses had real power but you know not the man i see before me today now all of us follow in hopes it'll change and then when we see him and we're like bruce is on that damn juice again you know <laughs> And, you know, everyone who isn't spiritually blind, you know, and in resonance can see what he's going through behind, you know, closed doors. And trying to take credit for me was extremely fucking stupid, you know, because unlike others, now I'm not going to fucking stop until my fucking point is made. So, you know, it's it's this. uh out of he's been out of resonance with himself for so long with an absent god self now i just see people dick slapping him relentlessly you know he let his potential die and ruined his own spiritual alchemy you know it goes back to what i said about pride becoming a weakness that there will always be that individual who tries to brag or consistently compare themselves to you or you know because of jealousy or they seem to think we're in competition with them over videos oh fuck that we don't give a fuck about the videos you know but i thought i'd fill people in about that because um people were asking you know that's basically what it's down to ea didn't censor uh Derek taylor when he was doing the drama sales bullshit and yet he expected somnus to censor me about my critique and that's what pissed him off the most you know so in that instance he had already proved himself an absolute fucking hypocrite you know neither will admit to the drama gimmick mentality of starting shit you know because drama sells you know then posture as victims of oppression for shit you start you know and then when people uh start speaking on it or talking about it you know you you fucking get to that state to where you've obtained your number of allotted followers and you wanna oh i'm humble now oh i'm humble now so neither of them will admit this because it requires self-reflection and accountability on their part you know due to them walking the path of televangelist you know this is why he tried to do that you know i actually expected better from ea because he was talented he was in resonance you know now decent authors simply go to him at risk of ruining their rep simply to reach a larger audience but, you know, he made an absolute horrific fucking mistake bringing that drama sales bullshit to the wrong fucking people. And it got brought to light. You know, that's why he's butthurt and trying to be subversive all over the place. You know, hence him trying to twist uh, a past time, you know, when we weren't involved. So I may actually make another video on that just because... I'm sick of seeing the subversive bullshit, but I've already proven so much already, you know, they're naturally, they're going to be people who leap to his defense, you know, I get it, you're trying to be supportive, but you're basically the equivalent of a Christian televangelist, you know, you think, you think about that, you, you walk up to uh, followers of a megachurch pastor, a Christian one, you know, and say, uh, hey man, did, did he really force push all of you when he tossed his jacket in the fucking air and shit? And they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, we felt it, we felt it, you know, it's, it's enamor, it's a, it's being enamored by false fame, because they don't know any better, I didn't know any better, you know, and that's my sense of self-reflection, you know, a true ally on this path isn't going to blindly follow you they're they're going to give you a good fucking wake-up call when you need it you know and nobody has done that 
you know, this is why we refer to disciples and people who are with us as allies, not followers in our empire, you know, as financial cattle. I've never seen a sorcerer so subjugated and insecure about themselves to where they have to proclaim themselves God and take credit for everything in the occult world, you know, and, and the work of others and even my healing and transfiguration, saving my life. You know, it's sad, he's actually become the very thing he hates, a televangelist, a cult Christian who desires worship and veneration so much that it got Archelous' spirit slain and cast into that non-existence, you know, in the first place. You know, in taking people's energy in that Nabataean uh, spirit bowl ritual years ago that many people saw through, you know, didn't make it any better. You know, it would be an easy excuse for him and many others to say, I'm some type of hater and lie to everyone, but that's not the case. I admit that he had his talents, even in fallacy and insight, and was blessed before he got his God self sacrificed, you know, and became this weak excuse of a sorcerer who has to sell drama to fake it till you make it, which, you know, naturally got worse as it went for, um, from the self-proclaimed king. He practically threw his fucking career away when he did that shit. So, now, back to my original, you know, apologies for the deviation in this video. If I don't shut it down and simply ignore it, idiots will continuously try and take credit for my prowess with Void because they want something to showcase. Now, back, I'm going to get back to my lecture, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I was speaking on resonance, you know. Naturally, when you're in resonance with the 13 and Void, there will be changes that occur. You People won't be able to knock you out of resonance or affect your spiritual alchemy or your connection with Void as many idiots have tried with me. You're going to become the perfect host to your God self and it's going to begin to merge with your physical flesh. You know, those who have mastered this like myself, you're going to see the void in its entirety. You're going to see the veil and skies darken as if the world itself wishes to withdraw consent for what you've become <laughs> and what you're conjuring into it. You know, as you've seen, this tower and its sorcery uh, have worked a grand alchemy upon me. You know, after such a meticulous deconstruction of my vessel by holy beings who tried to cause me to dis cease and desist living, you know, in Etheris before my role was complete, you know, when, when I was, you know, very young, they just simply wanted me dead or to suffer, you know, so you're going to see this, uh, I would say this transcendence that you're going to differ from regular individuals, you know. When you step through the void, you're going to realize you require no uh, need of certain breath, certain things when you're uh, phasing in and out, you know, especially uh, walking through the gate or having subtle sensations that distract from the void, you know. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because when I cast open the, the gate of the void, I had to change my thinking entirely, you know. When I naturally saw this, uh, that fog that appears when opening it, my analytical mind is thinking, hey, if there's fog, there's humidity. If there's humidity, there must be water. If there's water, there must be oxygen, you know. In my previous videos, you will have seen the older gate I had, you know, when I had two uh, votive candle holders on each side. And, you know, that would serve as that synchronetic guiding flame from the entity 
from the Tower of Stars, you know, as Aridios. You know, it's a draconic entity, you know, with fires that won't extinguish. You know, but this was this was lit to help me to where I could see them, you know. Now in older videos there was there was about the same space as the gate you see before me. You know, it's only about uh I would say like five paces forward or so like that. So, you know, when I'm opening this, fog is covering everything. I can't see anything in my temple, you know, other than energy. So I kept saying the incantation and I walk forward and I count ten paces. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? This this doesn't seem right. So I can still see the flames of the candles and I'm like, oh, maybe I miscalculated a bit on that. And I then count 10 more and now they've disappeared. So now at this point, I'll admit I was fucking terrified. You know, I'm quite worried. Reality is warping around me and I'm feeling presences all around me. Then all of a sudden I see several ancestral loa telling me, ah, you've finally come back. You know, so I recall uh, pain as well before, you know, when in this uh, pleasant wind, you know, it wasn't long before I felt this uh, feeling of cold and noticed this intangibility. Now, at this point, I was I was worried that I had actually died when I stepped through, which may or may not be the case. I then made a mistake that nearly cost me my life, which I want people who are trying to step into the void to avoid. I focused on breathing. Don't do this. So I immediately began suffocating, you know, and the mistake I had made, you know, remember when you're projecting from the flesh and you focus, uh, focus on what you're trying to deal with and you instantly return so true is it when dealing with the void you know i had finally begun seeing you know the ziggurats within the temple you know i had found uh i found these creatures you know in some way that appeared hostile and i start meditating as much as i possibly could now time is different here so you know, in an instant, you when you think of when you step into this place and when you dream, you when you dream, you don't focus on breathing or um, coming to your senses. You know, you kind of just go along with it. But I noticed certain um, astral dignitaries there along with the previously unnamed entities that I went over earlier, you know. They were able to share with me details about my personal ascent, ancestral lineage, you know, to the source, you know, personal rights that would work for me and for others, you know, each offering personal advice before leading me to what only could be described as a sacred ritual chamber with a form of lake but it was by far not water, you know, that was within it. But what could only be described as this liquid fire, you know, it appeared hot, but it was freezing. You know, its energy was very chaotic, uh, cold and desolate, you know, and it reflected stars. Now, you know, I'm thinking, oh shit, they want me to get in that you know, and they want me to bathe in this. Instead, a servant entity steps forward and collects it in some sort of a bowl. You know, my patroness, Jales, was there. She spoke something over it and told me to drink it. You know, and she was very adamant about it. I So I, I did. I felt, I felt like it froze over, you know the non-existent organs I had in place, my spirit exuded a form of fire, and I burned as Jeles stated, you know, and 
she she said rise this begun she said true transfiguration begins from within i felt myself changing even further you know disappearing into this simple ball of consciousness now she grabbed this and placed me into the lake where i knew what i was now i realized what i had came back why i had came to this place and reconstructed my spirit and fleshly vessel you know a void spirited rebirth I realized I was becoming in tranquil spirit like my ancestors that reside in the flesh of man you know now when I was pulled out everything had changed there was every sensation I was trying to contemplate you know I I couldn't necessarily understand you know they while I was contemplating this they were like you're you're not gonna be able to stay here long this long after the first time so before the uh, before they part they offered advice about the deities and entities even people who would seek to take my knowledge and power for their own you know as a boy spirited entity they stated they were that now I got to earn my place, you know, and prove myself of my prove myself worthy of the throne I've been giving. You know, they shared how to protect my God self, you know. I felt this uh, I felt myself pushed towards the uh, gate, you know, as they, you know, uh, gave me certain things to take back. I started smelling my incense again, you know. I took large gasps of air as if I had been suffocating. You know, my first thought was to immediately reach for my phone and uh, call Somnus and tell him, you know, about my experience, you know. And I realized I'm like trying to grip my phone and I can't do the reality phasing. You know, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm trying to grab this. And lo and behold, he calls me and I have to really focus to pick it up. And I answer, and I have to leave the room due to the uh, gate's interference. You know, I answer. The first thing he said was, I felt that. He was like, you succeeded. And, you know, he was, at a certain point, completing my sentences for me. He was like, it feels as if you had never been here before, does it? I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, uh, I explained what I saw and felt. You know, discovered how my own magical lineage had been subjugated you know along with quite a few others what's happening here to eradicate the originate source you know i've been feeling change i explain the changes i've been feeling in the vessel i currently inhabit you know that i'm still that i still feel with void you know we went back and forth talking about this for hours you know i was naturally giving my reports as well especially about the changes in strength and health wise you know my sc doesn't act up anymore you know it i don't feel pain in the morning or consistent pain when i walk and move about i notice weaknesses such as muscle tissue had that have been very damaged from strokes heart attacks you name it in the past you know uh, weaknesses that I had in like my uh, the right side of my vessel and my left leg had disappeared you know I had a really bad heart as well and it was enlarged and when I went to the doctor before they were like you're like yeah see your documents you had an enlarged heart you know and um, it was naturally healing my vessel you know but now um, the other thing was my success rate with void has become absolute my very blood has been um melded with that void essence you know one with the ether you know it carries its properties so now i can i can consistently use it in ritual you know um even being able to afflict others from from what I now have completely under my control, you know, sickness of the blood onto my enemy, or to ripple the ether, to cause changes in properties of certain things, you know, such as um, the Oracle's Elixir I had made for a disciple, 
you know, who remained steady for years, you know, didn't talk shit, you know, kept, kept on their path, you know, so I gave her this elixir, you know, with my own personal ingredients, and quite a few drops of the blood was put in it, which completely transfigured the, the substance, you know, with void. After she drunk it, she asked me what was in it, and I was like, oh, my blood, a few other things. She was like, well, now I can project freely, see very clearly without obstruction, you know, all of these changes, you know, it's why I can't put stock in a mega church pastor magician that claims to have saved my life, you know, out there doing half-ass tongue curse uh, rituals, you know, slowly killing himself, you know, proclaiming he's God, uh, letting himself fall to televangelist theatrics. And like I said, remember, power is felt, not seen, you know, with such foolishness. You know, this is why every time you see them strike against me or make some comment, they seem to get worse, don't they? Meanwhile, I'm still my pretty Nubian brown self. So, now, I'm not going to proclaim I'm a god, wave my hands all around like the only televangelist out there doing that as it goes against my spiritual alchemy. I'm merely going to state that I've been through the void. And I've become very hard to defeat in spirit or flesh like the rest of my brethren. Naturally, most would be thinking it's impossible, you know, and a bunch of other stupid shit from weak generic occultists, you know, who would accuse me of dumb shit. Take in mind, we aren't the only ones who believe in, uh, planar crossroads, gateways, and physically uh, traversing them, you know, interdimensional travel, as I stated before in Fallacy and Insight, it's all over historical cultures, you know, the Middle East having gateways to the desert gods, you know, a gateway to Vakeris, the black god's dominion is in Hungary, you know, there are several in Haiti, Japan, um, quite a few in Egypt, uh, specifically Cairo, you know, with certain pyramids, and even Stonehenge. Should someone get out there and perform the right ritual, they'll be able to travel. You know, the world is saturated with uh, planar crossroads, gateways to other dimensions, but indolent sorcerers today who prefer to be financial cattle or to lead financial cattle shall never walk through a single gate. There are places everywhere in which, you know, you'll see scientists try to uh, investigate these places that are uh, known to be, uh, oh, this place leads to hell, you know, because they're blind, they don't see what's actually in there, nor would they be willing to perform the rights to get to such places, you know, or earn the right to step there. So, you know, due to lack of spiritual alchemy, you know, and naturally not being able to colonize or seek veneration from it. And you have to remember, the spirits, they know you very well. You know, people don't realize today that currents, some of the currents are throttled purposefully by, by some spirits, as they're not going to allow you to use certain things you know, to expose its power to have tyrannical, corrupt governments who want to stay in control would feel the rights to your vessel and its secrets and what you're drawing upon, you know, to help them, these idiots, colonize and enter a dominion in which they don't belong, you know, so no, so no true sorcerer is going to show you this, you know, you have this, uh, if there's a sorcerer who's willing to do this, they're going to not be putting their own freedom, risk their own freedom, and so much more, you know. There will be currents, this is why currents have this natural, uh, 
I would say binding in place with spiritual alchemy, you know, with resonance, you know, it, it goes hand in hand with ego, you know, seeking attention and social media validation, uh, especially with the void, you know, it being alive and well, it knows as if you are exhibiting those poison signs of a spirit, you know, so what this does is it hinders your ascent, your growth, you know, everything is halted due to a lack of spiritual maturity. It prevents the physiological changes along with, let's say, like the televangelist, a God doesn't need to announce what it is, you know, it is felt, you know, you, you go through your changes and it adhere to your rights, I promise you, you're going to see the gate open for you. Now, naturally, due to the rituals I'm undergoing, there are some form of changes, you know, with those blessings. I'm discovering, you know, what they are and the changes, you know, that are um, occurring on my, you know, day-to-day uh, day -day basis, you know, so I'm, I'm saving that information so I can give it, you know, accurately later because, you know, I'm a real stigler for having accurate information, you know, it's why walking through the gate and becoming one with the void, you know, it grants that immense knowledge, you know, some have those nervous breakdowns, you know, and the energy can be quite overwhelming. You know, as you're completely subsumed in void energy due to a deeper a deeper understanding of multiversal realms, you know, and how one can be crushed under the weight of their own intellect, you know, power, mastery over soul travel, you know, um, quantum resonance, you know, breaching omnipotence. You know, it's why I ask um, people you know, are you sure you want to do this? Because the void can be quite the maddening ascendancy simply because of, you know, what void psionics do to you, you know? And let me go ahead and answer the question I receive so often, you know, what are void psionics and psionics in general, you know? You'll hear mega church pastor magicians and weak YouTube spiritualists say it's just, oh, it's just psychic powers of the mind, you know, you know, and they believe there's an easy way, you know, 10 easy steps or hacks for them to manifest, but it actually isn't the case, you know, void psionics is an amalgamation of perfected mind, spirit, and body union intricately weaving your brain's electrical impulses that synopsis you know along with the sorcery of the black void in order to fire off certain rituals spells you know causing psychic energy to manifest you know via the complete manipulation of void light and darkness you know the goal of that um you know that transfiguration the goal of melding those energies, you know, you're, you want it to become that form of dark matter, you know, which hyper evolves the mind, the pineal gland, you know, um, changes in your vessel, of course, you know, you know, often, you know, we of the void take pride in the power that our minds have. As we see, the mind is one of the sharpest tools we could ever possess. You know, often people underestimate the power of their own minds, um, the human potential that that uh, we, as when we start off as humans, have. You know, even something so simple as human memory, you know, is capable of storing like a petabyte of data, you know, that's a thousand and I think 24 terabytes or a million gigabytes. You can remember everything you've essentially ever learned in your life, you know, and that gets 
exponentially increased when you're um, in void, you know. You know, it's it's why when it comes to archiving stuff, you know, I'm going to remember, you know, what you said, what you did, you know. It's also said that, you know, we can lift six or seven times our own weight if our uh, muscles pulled in one direction, you know. However, people have done this without having, you know, muscles in one direction, you know, such as lifting cars, you know. I mentioned um, in Fallacy and Insight that we master um, what we call the unfettered will, you know, the spiritual adrenal response, you know, between desperation and survival. It's what make us, makes a sorcerer's success rate, you know, you'll find that void is the missing catalyst for that, you know, and uh, just in case people have forgotten, you know, what the void specializes in, you know, or didn't watch the last video, you know, we specialize in psychic war, uh, psychological warfare, you know, divination, astral projection, um, psychic power, you know, void psionics, void divination, and bilocation, and my personal favorite, of course, psychometabolic augment augmentation. You know, as it's allowed me to change my vessel and form. You know, true spirit communication, you know, mind control, enthrallment, uh, telepathy, psychometry, you know, and even possession. You know, um, void light and void darkness, you know, um, you're, you'll be able to see more of people's weaknesses, you know, aversions. You'll also master uh, empathy, you know, and um, as for the aversions you suffer in the void, you know, I found in the very beginning, later on, they'll not even be minor irritants to what you are, you know, that void universal energy accepts void light and void darkness. It's, it's in that sort of a uh, perfect balance, you know, akin to yin and yang you know, within self, there is this balance you'll notice, you know, if you, if you don't maintain it, you know, your ego will prevent spiritual alchemy and you can wind up fucking yourselves up, you know, like not paying attention to the basics, you know, even, um, even keeping things to help you through, through that, like, uh, certain, uh, metal attunements, or uh, sacred ornamentation, you know, gold or silver takes in void and universal energy, you know, and such as silver takes in, you know, solar energy and void light. In fact, if you uh, dabble in necromancy or vampiric sorcery, you'll notice there's um, an aversion to this, you know, and that's where it comes from in the actual uh, lore that's starting to disappear from this place. You know, it's not an actual allergic reaction to the silver with um, vampiric or certain necromantic entities, but it's the, uh, it's the light that it absorbs. You know, it's the solar energy, you know, but you'll only suffer this if you've um, cast yourself in the, the path of void darkness and you haven't protected yourself, you know, from certain celestial energies, you know like like myself but most of us most of us who do walk the path of void darkness protect ourselves accordingly you know even using certain things like that such as uh superconductors for channeling you know um while i'm on the subject i've you know been asked about you know uh jewelry and tattoos as well you know I believe everything you keep upon your fleshly temple, and you know, it's it's just my opinion, you know, should serve a purpose akin to the, uh, the way the spirits work, you know. It should serve a purpose in bringing strength to mind, body, and spirit. You know, my kind, enough as it is, are already demonized when they wear jewelry or having too many tattoos, you know. I've accepted, you know, 
much like the mega church pastor magician that humans in their infinitely small wisdom base certain knowledge and judgment upon what they see you know and will often reject the use of such things even though it helps them you know they'll see it as a uh, uh, tacky or demonize it for being too ceremonial or you know traditional even sacred uh, sacred color resonance as well as I mentioned uh, you know in my previous video that I mentioned you know I was gonna bring up here you know it's the voids form when you cast open that gate you know to merely look upon it you know the colors that can't be seen you know, releases the chains and expands your mind, releasing the senses of the soul, you know, from that proverbial prison, you know, the lore of your eyes being gateways to the soul, you know, they imbibe upon the essence of void and other things that you look upon, you know, it connects your, uh, as it's connected to your, what they call the Sahasra, the God mind, you know, necromancy has something similar with viewing pure death essence or spiritual places of death. You know, cemeteries, asylums, you know, the possibilities are pretty much endless with them. You know, Void has similar places, you know, certain ley lines. Now, but, you know, perhaps you've seen someone saying, posting a meme or some shit, you know, that says, you know, oh, if you stare at the void, it stares back, you know, most, if not all, post about it without knowing its uh, real meaning or anything about the void, you know, they post it because it sounds cool or dumb shit like that, but it, it holds an extreme truth, you know, in those words. When you cast open the gate or you meditate in front of it, as it opens, it's it's going to change you because of what you're looking at you know i want you know many to uh, start observing that you know sacred color resonance because you know every tower and path of apotheosis here has it you know uh don't listen to mega church pastor magicians when they say oh kill you fucking guru man they they complicate things by telling you to wear certain colors or you know it's these they they cast it off as you know being useless ceremonial magic and uh shame you into not practicing it due to their own weaknesses you know to start a fad of attack you know even acknowledging this and observing it is considered a devotional act you know it's not just uh, traditional or ceremonial it it helps in opening the way and you know and when we speak of uh, devotional acts we think of things that uh, take away the greatest sacrifice we can give you know and that's our time you know and some things such as that time need to be sacrificed but, you know, this is one of those things that careful observance of, you know, isn't adhering to a system or dogma, you know, to do things with proficiency and do it right, you know, not like a lazy Western megachurch pastor, you know, even it goes hand in hand with the smallest things such as uh, meditation, you know, giving you a... Uh, more time it will yield a higher return your success rate you know dedicating nexus items within your temple you know it's uh when you begin your your regimen you know and using these things and you know you don't break for it for anything you know no matter what's going on in the world like like i personally do um you doing this and carefully observing this is going to eradicate your doubts and strengthen you you know um, that's why when you see me you're going to see me wearing donning the colors of the void and you know it's uh talismans you know 
but doing this, you know, you can't have doubts as it's it's just going to defeat your own spirit. You know, we of the void keep one foot within it, you know, and one foot within this physical reality, you know, before we are ready to be subsumed by it completely, you know, therefore, when we do, we see different conceivable realities, you know, actually, the sad part about that is, what we do and what we talk about is actually considered far out there, which is sad, so many have been magically placated and lied to so much, they try and ground themselves in the mundane, you know, certain authors doing the uh, same thing, they'll receive something from a spirit, but because of their own social engineering and need for social validation, you know, acceptance, they water down the ritual, you know, to ground it to uh, reality, to not seem you know, insane, or, I don't know, that seems out there, that seems kind of, kind of crazy, you know, the, the only people I've noticed who do this, you know, are modern Western magicians, you know, they compromise and corrupt their practices, you know, because they're the generic minds that are after your fucking money, you know, I keep saying this, remember, if you only use sorcery for the mundane, you will only get mundane in return, you know, it's, it's not necessary, people will always see you as quite mad anyway for what you're practicing, it's, it's magic, the very word of that evokes fear, you know, and just disbelief, you know, before I could understand people trepidation for speaking on certain rights of their patron, you know, or even upon, you know, what they know. I mean, look at what we have to go with, uh, go through in our previous videos as, as a group, you know, and face today, you know, just, if you have the information out there, you know, and it seems crazy, you know, I know there will be ridicule and bullshit from the lesser minds, but, you know, and if you have it and it's not syncretism from you stealing a bunch of shit, you know, obviously the spirit is trying to speak through you, you know, so present it, you know, remember placating, you know, the generic mind hinders sorcery, you know, today your average generic sorcerer, uh, today in the U.S. sits in, uh, forums and Facebook, you know, becoming just fruitless practitioners. You know, thinking a scent will simply fall into their fucking laps. You know, do you honestly think uh, Muddy Laveau grounded herself in a false reality and claimed godhood? You know, or did she drop self, do her work, work with her spirits, and become her work? Do you believe any of these just uh, legendary sorcerers and witches? Of just every age sat on their asses like armchair fruitless practitioners on forums, you know, bickering, you know, and confining themselves to a closed reality, you know, and that, and that's, that's what the void is about. The void itself strives to break free of this reality. Its nature is to exist outside of it and unchained, you know, it's destined to bring back the mythical age, you know, to remove the veil and allow all to see the truth of existence. It's due to the work here of the, of the actual void that sorcerers all over the world are benefiting from this and pulling off more of what you would call a, the old arts, you know, are impossible. You know, I constantly hear this, uh, sickening shit coming out of stagnant communities about sorcery, you know, it's, it's always some dumb shit, you know, like the self-proclaimed king, it's, it's a fantasy, and, you know, it's, it's always, well, what does that have to do with the practicality and making me any money, you know, or, or living today, like I explained in a uh, fallacy and insight, you know, one forbidden art, can free the mortal coil, 
you know, of your, your mind, body, and soul, so that you aren't like westernized spiritualists today that have absolutely no power or resonance, you know, not knowing or having faith in their own ritual or what's even going to happen next with the manifestation, you know, they're begging for random scraps, you know, similar to what I said in a, a sacred orientation, if People can realize the power of energetic faith through uh, practice. They'd be on. They'd be fucking unstoppable. They'd be on the level of of some of the greatest sorcerers I've ever met. You know, even even the Western JCI isn't going to bring a cross back to the store, as I said before, and say, "Hey, uh, this, this doesn't work." You know, because they know it's supposed to draw in certain forces through faith. You know, it's why I feel uh, Solomon, uh, my ancestral priest, you know, monks I've seen in uh, uh, presenting themselves, Taoist, you know, people in Japan, and many others who exist outside of the West have become some of the few places that have these uh these uh magical blacksmiths i would call them you know who believe in what they do and work with them with absolute proficiency and ritual rather than someone with spiritual depth and polarized energy trying to give you a demonic talisman you know that'll supposedly work and they work with celestials or angelic beings constantly you know they know those arts, you know, they they freed themselves from those uh, aspects, you know. Once you freed yourself with mastering what you perceive to be impossible, such as me mastering and specializing in psychic surgery through void, you know, it was one of the many factors that helped free me from my sickness. You know, now my idiotic enemies can't touch it, you know. It strengthened my connection with my ancestral lineage, you know, made me aware of every incarnation, you know, along with walking through the gate, you know, with with what I practice. You know, I had known the cabal before and, you know, accepted this. You know, quite a few people in the past, I found out just so much about, about myself, you know, um, and many others, you know, certain famous magicians and even uh, founding fathers sought to use these things, you know, even from my own ancestry and tried to uh, bind them, you know, and ended up getting enslaved for even getting their toes wet, you know. And yet, I want you to, I want people to realize that there's, there's so much more out there that can be discovered, you know, if you would just, you know, commit, rather than a mega church pastor magician who thinks, ah, oh, this sounds good on paper, but they're never going to practice it. You know, there are those who master these arts, you know, people have known about this for a very long time, you know, Tibetan monks and the ones in I, I believe, Yenin, actually had to convince the world that levitation and psychokinesis was fake so that you know for one people would stop trying to break into their fucking temples for information but actually so people could really search for themselves and work for that said knowledge rather than um try to put forward something they don't understand you know people see through you know spiritual televangelist because when people you know see something they don't know or can't have you know let me rephrase that can have but it'd take some extreme level of work and dedication you know they're they don't want to pursue it you know the scheme starts brewing you know a lot of mercenaries along with a western spiritualist believe that you know everything can just be bought you know, going everywhere, Haiti, you know, 
Tibet for fake pilgrimages. You know, once you get past tourist traps in places, or you put in actual practice to see the hidden world rather than, you know, pretend and live in a delusion, you know, the fake it till you make it bullshit. You know, people even now think undeath is actually just completely a result of fiction, despite many cultures knowing about it. You know, even uh, George uh, Romero, you know, uh, inspired, you know, by my own uh, culture's perception of the lost dead or the, the voodoo zombie, you know. It, and it's out there, but it got brought out here and, you know, tainted, you know. If you, if you wheel the void, you're going to see through all of this rather than, you know, enslaving yourself to this reality that people are trying to put forward, you know. You have to drop self and become, you know, become void, you know, if this is your personal tower, you know, of apotheosis. You know, remember the void is greatly opposed as it seeks and propels truth, you know, that of spiritual and mental freedom. It destroys the false lights, veil of reality around your uh, mind, body, and soul, you know, or rainbow body, or in my own uh, culture, the unbound and tranquil spirit, you know, you will be free of all restrictions. You know, it's, that's, that's, that's what the void is about. You know, it's about freeing yourselves and relentlessly bringing forth, you know, that information. You know, I'm going to bring, uh, for a, uh, certain rights, you know, remember I do copyright our material before speaking on it, and that takes time, you know, due to every weak sorcerer out there thinking that, plagiarism programs don't exist, you know, trying to steal shit, so I like to take precautions, you know. Um, before I get to the end of this, lastly, to those who believe the hype, we're fine. The same mega church pastor magician had been trying to curse us for years, and is still failing miserably, and hasn't even so much as grazed our aura, you know, constantly trying to make over dramatic displays at this point it seems like he's trying to convince himself you know in a delusion you know it's <laughs> you know that because he tried to convince himself that because we weren't on facebook oh my my curse was successful they've been silenced you know if you've if you've seen our track record you know it's pretty normal that we don't spend all day on fucking uh social media just because of how disgusting it is you know we've been preparing and going to and from our black gates you know traveling um to and from our dominions and when we disappear off social media that's that's why it's them who get worried you know remember the job of a mega church pastor magician is to talk shit and claim they're the biggest of the bad to garner drama, you know, which they then act like they're the fucking victim of, you know, and say people are hating on them, you know, they've never been a threat to the, to us at all, you know. Thank, thank everyone for sending in the uh, messages and checking up as well. But, you know, it's unfortunate for EA, it's, you know, unfortunate he is gone the way he's gone, you know, due to my risen state of spirit with Void, I feel no hatred towards him. I see him as a sick and dying animal, you know, one whom no one can help despite its previous accomplishments because, you know, it's the last of its kind, but it chose spiritual extinction for itself like many others, you know, they hate me and attempted to bind my tongue because they've accepted that all that they are, are laid bare before me, you know, it's why they keep trying to use a weak subversive commentary, which I re <laughs> reward with punishment, you know, and weak curses that'll never find a being 
that doesn't officially exist here you know I personally personally love it when the select few you know such as EA and all of these people do because they are a shining gleaming example for real sorcerers in the background on what not to do what not to become and to never let yourself magically placate or give yourself over to drama sells theatrics or clickbait televangelism and raise what I can only call in this day and age evangelical occultist who will never find the truth you know this this is what happens when you try to live off of the merits of others you know you got you got Asmore Torval you know people in his own community came to me telling me he all of a sudden wanted to talk about how uh, stagnation is death you know taking my own words into his video as usual you know and uh, started losing a fuck ton of people who see it for what it is you know like when I brought forward the uh, stolen identity of the singer who who had the uh, same haircut and everything same name I believe he's a singer in the uh, the UK he copied everything from this singer you know right down to a uh, hairstyle clothing mannerisms you know I wasn't gonna blame him for that but I really got tipped off when at the end of the concert the guy says stay true stay awesome on one of this guy's songs I laughed my ass off at this shit and I uh, I exposed it you know and naturally they reported my photos and you know there was the shaved head head shit again you know if you didn't know broken people and women do this as a, a sign of psychological relief as it's an attempt to start over you know he bummed the name of the eye of the oracle and all the other shit that i've been seeing in his eye of odin bullshit trailer you should go watch that it's pretty fucking hilarious you know like a good programmed uh televangelist protege he tried to spin the result of him losing everything was a result of his Eye of Odin ritual, you know, that that took everything, you know, oh, it took it took my marriage and everything from me so I could get stronger and all this other shit. <laughs> Still, zero lack of uh, zero accountability and self-reflection. You know, it's it is outstanding. They they prove me right with every step they take in my direction, every subversive commentary. You know, it's it's why people can't listen to their words and take them seriously. They, when you talk shit subversively, people see the petty tale evangelist you are. You can't claim a victim. You know, if you're starting shit, you know, you know, you, all when all that they are is the amalgamation of someone else's work. Our image you know like the self-proclaimed king you know they had uh, had they been real sorcerers they would have had the divinatory foresight as I do to see how I would respond to that and how badly it would end it would end for them you know even even every subversive commentary I hear I respond to it it gets them digged down you know, un understand this, I was raised around drama and uh, Europeans, you know, I'm using in all encompassing terms, trying to subversively insult me, and, and they all got fucked for it in one way or another. I, you know, my own culture suffer no disrespect, you know. EA tried to fear monger me in a newsletter and in a, a video. I take your life and now I saved your life. Blah, 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 blah. Starts acting fucking retarded. You know, the whole world tries to fear monger my kind into submission. He actually thought that shit would work. So, you know, I'm, I'm fucking calling it now. The response videos will be something along the lines of. Have I been consumed by spiritual debt? Find out now. You know, here's how to get rid of your spiritual debt. 
and add it to his website as a service or something, you know, on something he knows nothing about, you know, or have I become a televangelist? You know, it's, it's always some way to spin a bad situation or something they've started and to try and profit about it. You know, the real beauty of this is every time they're subversive or they have a response, their followers are, are like, okay, who are ignorant anyway, will say, okay, who are they responding to? Who are they cursing? Who are they talking shit about? You know, who are they trying to start shit with? You know, they're going to come here, see who they're responding to, and see the truth of my words about their past, present, and even their future. You know, it's not going to be like how they think it will, you know. But thank you to all those who actually recognize the truth of our words and what we're striving to accomplish here in this plane of existence. Thank you to all those who have exhibited loyalty onto their spirits and their very path, you know. I'm going to see you in uh, the Void video uh, part two. I really hope to see many of you drawn to the Void, you know, and remember in all currents, um, indolency will devour you, you know. You'll be devoured by the very thing you seek to control, like so many others. Now, you've learned of some of the, the how and the why weak and strong enemies alike along with adversarial spirits will never touch me. In part two, you, you are going to learn the methods of why they're as good as defenseless against void and why we are a force of natural selection. Now, lastly, to our uh, shit-talking resident televangelist, you said our works were feeding you. <laughs> Tell me, have you fed plentiful? It looks as though you have. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.